Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. My notebook's outside. <laughs> Grab it, mine. Make money. <laughs> Our first item on the agenda is for public comment. I did notice, Willie May, that you would like to speak at public comment. You all have the agenda item uh, separate from public comment. You can speak now or you can speak with everyone at the group time. It's, it's whatever you prefer. I can't get one. Well, we have you on the agenda right after the approval of the consent agenda, and um, after Teresa makes her introductions, if you'd like to comment at that time, that might be appropriate if you're okay with that. I had it, Ms. Guy. Okay. No. Bad. Well, very good. That was the only speaker we had signed up, so um, hearing none others, uh, I'll ask for any commissioner responses to the public comments. Not a one. Hearing, hearing none, we'll move on to the approval of the agenda. Commissioners, if you'll take just a minute and review the agenda, the order of the agenda, and the items on the consent agenda, and consider if anything needs to be removed from consent or if any other item needs to be added or removed. During that time, I'll ask the county manager if you have any changes or additions to the agenda as presented. No, sir. <coughs> Commissioners, any item on the consent agenda we'd like to pull? I'm good with it. Okay. <laughs> Hearing none, we will um, ask for a motion to approve the agenda, which will include the items on the consent agenda. Is there such a motion? So moved. Thank you, Linda. Second. Second. Second from Bill. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The agenda is approved along with the items on the consent agenda. So moving right to item six, which is our, I, I shouldn't say our main feature because <laughs> I know Jason's going to speak later, but one of our features. <laughs> agenda items tonight is the aging Democrat demo dem, listen to me demographic data what have I been up to demographic data report and proclamation we'd like to invite Teresa Jackson to come forward Teresa is with the Piedmont Triad Regional Council um, area agency on aging and also Mary Carter chair of the Alamance County Planning Committee for services to the elderly Ms. Carter welcome to you welcome to you both thank you am I in the right place you are exactly right okay you can, if you want to, pull that towards you a little bit, and then uh, it should be right for you. Good evening, Chairman Manning, County Manager Honeycutt, Commissioners, and other civic leaders, sit and the citizen of Alamance County. Okay. My name is Mary Carter, and I am the chairman of the Alamance County Planning Committee for Services for the Elderly. The main purpose of the planning committee is to be the voice of the people in Alamance County who are age 60 and older. They are care leader givers and individuals with disabilities. Our goal is to ensure a senior friendly environment in Alamance County. We achieve this through planning advocacy, awareness, and responsible, a responsible allocation of federal and state dollars through the Home and com Community <coughs> Care Block Grant. I want to thank the commissioners in advance for endorsing the proclamation acknowledging October as the long-term care Residence Rights Month, which is on the agenda for approval tonight. I thank the commissioner for the opportunities, uh, uh, for the appointments they have approved for the Aging Services Planning Committee and for the Community Advisory Committee, which assure the rights of residents in long-term care facilities. I would like to recognize the member of our group tonight. Uh, first of all, my chair, uh, co my vice chair of the committee, will you please stand? And all the members of the committee, will you please stand? Could you please give these volunteers a hand? Ms. Carter, would you like to introduce them? Yeah, will you introduce yourself? Linda Snipes Martinez. Thank you. David Smith. Thank you. Mary Bowser. 
Grace Baldwin and Vice Chair. Marcia Isley. Jean Massey. Willie Mae Curry. Kathy Barton. Wendy Davis. George Ash. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, I would like for everybody in the room who's 60 or older to sing. Commissioners also. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I've been telling now, also the tonight. baby boomers. <laughs> Baby boomers? You just don't well, that was that's something about Eddie, we're baby boomers. Yeah. 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 We're booming. Wow. Okay. Uh, the presentation is all about you that are standing. <laughs> now, uh, that's the reason why you see. You know it's for you. You please be seated. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> Teresa Jackson, agent program planner with the Pigmont Triad Regional Council area agency on aging will provide more information about the Asian and disabled disabled population and their caregivers in Alamance County thank you very much thank you Ms. Carter mm -hmm. Ms. Jackson we welcome you thank you thank you very much everybody Okay, thank you, Mrs. Carter, for the leadership of your uh, Alamance Aging Services Planning Committee, Chairman Manning, Commissioners, County Manager Hunnicutt, and uh, citizens and guests, thank you again for allowing us this time on your agenda tonight. Uh, as she said, I'm Teresa Jackson, and I work for the Piedmont Triad Regional Council Area Agency on Aging. I'm here with my colleagues, Adrian Calhoun, the Assistant Director, who did not meet the aging criteria <laughs> earlier. Well, she can still stand still up. Still stand up, yeah. yes. Yes. And Ashley Mark Olivia, who, who is the long-term care ob ombudsman for this <coughs> county as well. Both of you stand up, please. Welcome. And, yes. and thank you uh, to all of the planning committee members that are here also. Uh, we appreciate the time to talk with you this evening about our area plan as well as the Alamance County Demographic Report. Um, we'll be highlighting aging trends within the county. It's the job of the Area Agency on Aging <coughs> to be the stewards of the allocation of federal, state, and local funds to services and resources for the aging and disabled population and their caregivers. We have the 12 county area and the two chief funding sources are the home and community care block grant funds as well as the family caregiver support program. So how are we going to accomplish this? Every four years the Area Agency on Aging has to develop a plan that's a strategic plan so that we can provide services across the 12 county region. It's mandated by the Older Americans Act and so we are federally mandated to do that and it's a roadmap for us for the next four years to be able to provide the services for um, across the region to the needs of the older adults and their caregivers who's going to benefit from this plan well when a community is senior friendly it's also child friendly and family friendly therefore the whole community uh, benefits from it how is it developed it's developed from the input of all the communities, as many people as possible, to be involved so that they can provide us input to help identify the strengths and the weaknesses of the various communities across the county. We do this by having an online survey for our area plan. And it's available at our website, ptrc.org. And that's our primary tool for gaining input. We hope to print it in the local newspapers, have it at the library, and we have some hard copies. You each have a hard copy of that tonight. We hope that maybe it could be put on the county website. We want to reach both young and old, all ages, so that we have input for the future. We have partnered with our workforce development mobile lab, which has 11 computer stations on board, and there it comes. It visited Burlington on October 9th when we had folks come aboard and take the aging services survey at that time. 
plus anybody could also apply for a job. That's its primary purpose across the region. The idea is to forge an area plan that identifies and measures um, how we can ensure the health and well-being of our aging and disabled population across the county. So that brings us to our demographic report. The role of your county's aging services planning committee grows more important every single day as the aging population continues to grow. And we saw that today with everyone standing up. The baby boomers began to um, turn retirement age in 2008, and it's estimated that every day we have 10,000 boomers turning 65. Imagine that. So as the unique population segment ages through um, its older years, shall we say, the existing infrastructure that we have for health services and resources is going to be stretched beyond capacity. So, commissioners, you have before you um, not only the PowerPoint given earlier, but the booklet we have for the demographic report that's been prepared by the uh, Piedmont Triad Regional Council Planning Department and the Area, area <coughs> Agency on Aging. We're not going to be able to get into all of the pages in the report, but we will discuss some of the highlights. All of the data is provided for by the U.S. Census Bureau, the North Carolina Office of Budget and Management, um, and the North Carolina State Demographer, as well as the American Community Survey. So those of you in planning for the county services probably are familiar with this, but the main purpose and point of this is to demonstrate the growth of the county over a 40-year time span. That's on page one in the report. It's a, it's a simple depiction of the growth in the first 10 years there. We had a 40% growth, but it's projected out to 2030 to have as much as a 58% growth across all populations in the county. So how do, what does that have to do with the aging population? How do they show up in there? Um, it looks like, let me just see if we missed one. Nope, okay. Um, this chart shows the kind of a, a cross section of the over 60 plus population who are the ones who are going to be receiving our block grant services. The bottom level is the uh, 60 to 64, primarily those who are still working. Then we have the 65 to 74 age group. Then we have the golden years, 75 to 84 or so they call it. That's in the green section. And in the purple is the 85 plus are those who are more frail and really need more of the resources and services that are available. You can see the, the growth not only from 21,000 in 1990 to as much as 45,000 in 2030. That means it's almost going to double the 60 plus population through those decades. So where do the, this population of 60 plus live? Well, the county is primarily rural, as you can see from the green on the map. The orange are the municipal areas. Each red dot represents 10 adults who are 60 plus. So you can see the concentration of the 60 plus population is primarily in the towns and the communities. But we do have a fairly even distribution throughout the county. And actually, the 60-plus population comprises 20% of the total population of the, of the county. And we all know that uh, other folks love North Carolina, and they're all moving to Alamance County for the wonderful retirement years. So the p folks that are in the rural areas, though, how are we going to meet the needs of those people as they're trying to age in place? Has anyone heard of aging in place? And that means they would prefer to stay at home. We try to keep folks in their home as long as possible through their years. With that, since we are dispersed throughout the county, especially in the rural areas where um, they can't access a lot of services, there's a number one problem of transportation. We have 12% of our population does not have access to a vehicle. They, um, that means that they have to find other means 
And at this time, I want to let you know that Alamance County Transportation Authority, ACTA, and Alamance County Community Services partnered to provide 14,000 trips in fiscal year 2011. So they're trying to meet that need. The next one is nutrition and food insecurity. North Carolina ranks ninth in the nation for food insecurity in the elderly population. Our elderly often have to choose where they'll spend their limited income, whether it be for essentials like rent, utilities, and medical expenses, or are they going to purchase food this month? If they don't purchase food, that makes their nutrition even worse and more prone to sickness, which is more costly, of course. In Alamance, nearly 18% of those age 80 or 60 and over face food insecurity, and that equates to about 5,480 individuals who are 60 plus. Our Meals on Wheels served 57,900 meals in fiscal year 2011 just to attempt to meet some of this need, but they still have 21 people on the waiting list. And another challenge that folks face is poverty. About 9.5% of our 60 plus population, roughly about 1,900 individuals, live on less than $11,170 per year. And that is the federal government's defined poverty level for a one-person household. It's, it's barely more than that, about 3,000 more than that for those that are living off of their uh, retirement income. When it comes to another challenge, we have disabilities. Nearly 11% of the adults under age 65 have a disability in Alamance County. But did you know that over age 65, we're talking about 42% have a disability? That's, that's humongous. Then another challenge are the number of uh, grandparents that are raising grandchildren. Raise your hand if you know someone who's doing this. Yes. It's becoming more and more common. And although the, the data would only show that there are 1.6% raising grandchildren in Alamance County. We expect this figure may not be accurate. A lot of people don't confess to it and are doing it anyway. But the number is going to continue to rise. And it's, an, it's known also that a third of those are uh, suffering from a disability themselves while they're trying to raise grandchildren. There are many other topics that pose a challenge to the aging in place that we talk about, and that's covered in the report, but we won't, we won't delve into that. So let's look again at this map of where the aging are. Now imagine in 20 to 30 years what that population is going to look like. Where is the density of the 60 plus? And even though some of us aren't 60 yet, we will be on that board here in a few years. So. As we look into the future, we know that funding is not going to increase. We're fa facing the sequestration, and if those cuts come across the board, we'll be lucky to even maintain ground where we are presently. It's a classic issue of supply and demand. We know we're, um, that the need is going to continue to rise, but we're going to have limited resources with what we have. We want to allow aging in place because, you know, it's less expensive in medical care and costs, but it's also better for the individual, both physically, medically, spiritually, mentally, socially. It's a healthier balance. We picture our existing senior services now where they are and the resources that we have. Let's imagine the ways that we need to extend them and change them offer them out across the county. Uh, we need to overlay maps, potentially, of where churches and schools are as we start formulating our partnerships. So what is going to be needed? Well, we have to continue this discussion uh, with uh, the recommendations of the planning committee, and we need the entire community to be aware of the silver tsunami aging wave that's coming upon us. We're not quite prepared yet for the needs that that's going to demand. We're asking as many people as possible to take our survey and participate in the development of our 
four-year area plan. We need to forge creative partnerships within our country's infrastructure to meet the increasing needs, and we'll probably have to think across the county lines to delve further into partnerships. This report is just, uh, just a detailed snapshot of the population landscape, and it's what's projected at this point for 2030. This could change entirely. But, uh, and you are fortunate in Alamance County, not all the rural counties across our 12 county region have as much growth as Alamance, but that also means you face more challenges. I hope that this report has brought you some information that you can use for further dialogue. You as our public officials and civic leaders, planners, um, citizens across the county, service providers, professionals, and everyone in the community. We all need to have a say in, in what's ahead for us. Commissioners, you're the first people in Alamance County to have the copy of the demographic report. We invite you to read through it, share your insights with the Aging Planning Services Committee, these people before you here, as well as us as members of the Area Agency on Aging. In a few weeks, the Aging Services Planning Committee is going to be discussing more of the details from this report. <laughs> and over the next year, they'll come back to you with more suggestions and recommendations uh, for aging services. And we want to make sure that the voice is heard and that we have the full community's input on this. So remember, all ages can <coughs> take the survey. You do not have to be 60 and over to take the survey. It's available to everyone, and we will make it such. So we thank you for your time tonight, and I would be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, I've got one. Where, where do you turn this into once you take this survey? The survey, after it's taken, you can give it to any planning committee member. You can mail it into our agency. Uh, if it's done online, it's automatic. People don't always realize that, but we'll have, a, we'll have places within the community where they can be uh, received and mailed, but it can always be mailed to um, any of our partners here in the county as well as our office in either Greensboro or Winston-Salem. So this is available online to be taken online? Yes, sir. Uh, it is ptrc.org. Yeah. Was wasn't that the <laughs> site you put up there? On yes, that? slash aging I survey. I those meetings, so you can okay. give it to me because I, I go every month. Well, I was just curious if we could put a link mm -hmm. to that on our we, website with this. We can do that. Get, mm -hmm. you know, that would be fabulous. County opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have other counties that are doing that, so we would love right. to have that if, representation. If we can get, uh, we'll, we'll try to put the uh, entire the report on, and then also with a link yeah. to the yeah. survey as well with that. Right. We were waiting. Uh, the report has not been public until we presented it here tonight. We'll also have that available soon after this meeting. It'll be available at our website as well. Teresa, do you also work with um, either the United Way or the Community Council in terms of sharing this information? One of their priority areas is services right. for the elderly. The do, you, do you have that, yes. that we, link of communication? We all live in that same environment where we're sharing information and forming the partnerships that uh, serve on each other's councils, et cetera. So after this presentation, we've had requests for this information and data from other sources so that they too can use the information to write grants. Right. Um, everyone's looking for funds and we all <laughs> want to partner along together right. to receive those funds. Well, we can yes. certainly give you the current contacts at United Way if you don't have those. Absolutely. But this is certainly a high area of, mm -hmm. of interest and need that they have identified as well. Yes. We're working together, and they can always contact us. We have, we have long lists of partners, don't we, Adrian? So, <laughs> yes. Well, good. Any other Thank questions you. for Ms. Jackson? Um, if not, I, I did promise Willie May if, if Absolutely. you would like to come forward and speak to us, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Okay. I, I've never Thank known you. Willie May turn down an opportunity <laughs> like that. Fabulous. Thank is Blair you. on board? <laughs> Blair is yeah. attending another commissioner okay. meeting. Okay. Yes. Fair Otherwise, he told would, me he was going to be here. He w had planned to be here, but he's back and forth. So okay. Tonight, when, he so. had, when he said that, I'm like, okay, Blair's not here. <laughs> yes. So they need to come and tell you how proud we are of you. <laughs> you are a wonderful group of people, and you've done so much for us. 
You be and careful. I've been with man. you for a long time. Yes, you and have. We moved here in 1956, and this has been a wonderful place to live. Teresa, can so, you pull the mic down a little bit? She's got it. Good. Good. <laughs> it's a, been a wonderful place to live, and you have listened to us. I have been on the planning committee since 1990. What you did with the county hospital was marvelous. Every day I ride by there, I think about how wonderful it is and what it's doing to the people in North Carolina, as well as Alamance County. We are being photographed and shown to everybody. I've been on the planning committee since 1990, and it's been a wonderful organization to be a part of. And I've been on the, the uh, senior Tar Hill legislature since 1993, and I'm a 20-year member from the very beginning and when I was asked if I would be Alamance County's delegate to the senior legislature I said yes if I can be on the crime committee because <laughs> I had a special uh, uh, thing I wanted to do I wanted to introduce a criminal background check legislation for everybody who worked in facilities for the elderly it took us nine years but we've got it That's good. we've got it I couldn't imagine people who were elderly having to be taken care of by criminals and it didn't suit me at all and so we introduced that and it, that was the first legislature that was legislation that was presented to the senior tall hill legislature in july of 1993. it took us nine years to get it but we got it we just got back from the senior legislature in october the second and third and i want to tell you that i have one of the the greatest alternates that anybody could have. I've been there 20 years and prior to this time I've only had an alternate for three years who went with me to the senior legislature. But George, well, stand up. <laughs> stand up. <laughs> he is wonderful. And they admire him so much in Raleigh. Everybody knows who he is and he's interested, he's intelligent, he speaks out and he does a wonderful job. I want to tell you that when we went down to the senior legislature, we didn't go to Raleigh at this time. We went to Greensboro because the people were not meeting in Raleigh and we wanted to look all around and have people <clears throat> from different areas look at us. But uh, w the senior legislature is concerned about the thousands of people in North Carolina. Do you know that about a fourth of the counties in North Carolina have more citizens 65 and older than they have children from 0 to 17 wow. years of age. And that's happening every day. Hmm. There are about 10,000 people who are turning 65 every day and becoming senior citizens in the United States. And we must look after them. If you look at the obituaries in our paper, it's not uncommon at all to see 102, 103, 104, and 105. Hmm. And I'll be 90 September, I mean December the 24th. <laughs> But I'm still going to let you know how I feel about older rights and older privileges. It's wonderful to have them there. We had about 80 resolutions that were presented to us prior to the October meeting. And we had to choose our final ones at that meeting. And it was difficult to do because we had to think about what we needed to do in the next year to ask the General Assembly to do for the elderly people. And it was just so hard to do, but we had a big blow handed to us when we first went. The, uh, the area, the North Carolina Division of Aging and uh, Adult Services, Dennis Street spoke to us, and he says it, it's possible that the Older Americans Act administered programs is going to lose between two and three tenths million dollars and two and seven tenths million dollars in thir year 13, 2013, for senior adults. Wow. Now that makes me angry and it hurts my feelings because I love adults and I love the elderly. I've loved children, I taught and retired in 1978 and so I love people. And I love Alamance County and I know those seniors and I don't want them to be without food, without care, without transportation, without medical services and the pro things that they need. So that we've got what it could be in it, just in our state alone, it could result in nearly 3,000 adults not getting the help they need for home meals, home delivered meals, any kind of help that they need to get. And we don't need to cut that. 
Now, you have listened to us and you have helped us so much. You have just been so supportive of us and everything that we've asked you to do. And for that, I am very glad. And one thing I want to say, and I'm not going to say why, don't sell that schoolhouse up on North Main Street. It has too many needs. We have too many needs in this county that that facility could be used for. And I taught that when I first came, and I have some tender feelings for it. Now, we were told that a sequestr sequestration has been implemented by Congress that if a budget for older, the budget has not been done by January the 2nd of 2013, they're going to cut out all those services and we could lose. I just told you uh, that there are going to be more than 12,000 older adults on the waiting list for services. And they, we'd have to deal with those. We will know who they are personally. We don't want that to happen to people who have made this country and this town and this county what it is and this state what it is. That bothers us terribly. Now, I want to tell you just a little bit about what I'm going to give you uh, copies of what we finally came up with. And these were not all the things that we were concerned about. I think I have them. I think I kept one. I'll have to get back to one. I gave you mine too. All right. We choose five priorities every year that we send to the General Assembly, and we fight rigidly for those with people. Well, first of all, when we looked at what was going to happen and what might happen and knowing how many people would be waiting for services, we tried to concentrate on services to people. First of all, we want to maintain funding for senior centers. I don't know what we would do without that lovely senior center in Burlington. I was on the uh, evaluation committee of that for just a few months, and it has a, re a reference of uh, excellence. It's a wonderful facility, and it has everything that we need. There are only, only 159 in North Carolina, and a lot of counties do not have it. But we need to support those who do have it, because people, it means so much to us. Then the second thing was restoring funding to sustain Project CARE. <coughs> Excuse me. Project CARE, we know how many uh, adults are living at home with family members taking care of them, and some of them have to work to even maintain anything. And so we have to get caregivers alternatives to running on empty. We said that that should be in every county in North Carolina, and we want it there by 2015, or as soon as possible. Now, I was very concerned about criminal background checks. Another thing that I'm interested in, I don't want a drug addict looking after our elderly people. <coughs> in a county not too far from us and not in our region, the, the, the people who were working in a facility for the elderly got everybody in bed, and then they went out to smoke drugs. And a lady fell out of her bed and broke her hip uh, and lay there all night long. Thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> You're so kind. All night long, she lay there crying and screaming with her hip. No one found her until the next set of, of uh, caretakers came into that facility. Now, we don't need drug addicts looking after our families. <coughs> so we need to provide specialized care for frail adults and that they should have pre-employment and random drug testing, and we are fighting for that. If it takes us 10 years, we're going to still worry the General Assembly to death until we get it. <laughs> and uh, we don't bother them that much. We like them. They, th they know we like them, but they better <laughs> do what we ask them to do. And then another one is strengthen and fund North Carolina's Adult Protective Services programs. <coughs> I'm very concerned about what I hear are happening to adults. Investments taken away from them or given them incorrectly, abused. We hear things all the time. People breaking into their homes and stealing from them. We have got to strengthen the protective services for adults because sometimes criminals take, take advantage of adults because they know they can get by with it. 
Now, we have the Home and Community Block Grant Program. <coughs> Excuse me. Last year, we got $860,000 that we administered and budgeted through the Planning Committee, and we spent every cent of it. It was for the people in four or five areas, and they are listed here. The age 60-plus population is projected to grow by 171% by 2030. Now, when we think about that, we have got to keep that money going, and we have got to look after these people. Now, the planning committee looks after the budget and budgets that money, and we've already budgeted for 2013. And we, we get Meals on Wheels, all kinds of organizations in our county that do a beautiful job of looking after uh, the elderly, and I love them. And you people give us so much help with doing that. And there are approximately 18,000 people currently on the waiting list <coughs> for services that are provided by this, this money. And so we want that to come back. We want it increased by at least $7 million to meet the needs. Now, I don't mind telling you, when the Home and Community Money Money runs out, a lot of our organizations have their own money raising programs because they realize the needs for it. And I don't mind telling you what I do. I collect aluminum foil and aluminum cans, and I sell them, and I give the money to an aging agency. I've given it to hospice. I've given it to Meals on Wheels. I've given it to all the, ages, the aging agencies, and we were going to continue to do that. We love those people. We want to know that they're going to have the services that they need, and we're not going to let it go. But I just thank you, and when we did our last inventory sheet or to the Times News. The next day, the editor came out with this editorial, Congress putting seniors at risk. And that whole editorial named the things that we wanted to have done. And we, so we advertised. We don't sit back and just rest when we come back from meetings. We are activated, and we love it. And we're going to continue to be activated. Now, we know that the United States, if they have that sequestration cut, cannot put it much money in, and, know, and I know that you don't have the money to do it either, but encourage us to see that we get some money to take care of us in our country. There are a lot of things that have happened, and we just need to look after our people. And thank you for what you do. You stand behind us. You listen to us. You support us, and we love you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Willie Ray. Thank you very much. <laughs> Realizing that Willie Mae Kern is a tough act to follow, are there any <laughs> other representatives that would like to make comments at this time? You're welcome to do so. Well, we thank you for your attendance, it's a your job presence. To do what we do. We it, love I know it is. You I'll can be tell. I've been years old this year, and I have been retired from the school system since 1978, and I'm going to continue to work it until the good Lord I, I would like to offer a, a proclamation. Um, I would like to offer this in the form of a motion that I would like to read, and then after I read it, I'll ask for a second. This is the um, proclamation. It's entitled, My Voice, My Vote, My Right, and I would like to just take a moment and read it in its entirety, please. Whereas there are more than 1.6 million individuals living in 16,000 nursing homes and 1 million individuals living in 50,000 board and care, assist, care assisted living facilities in the United States. And whereas the Federal Nursing Home Reform Act of 1987 guarantees residents their individual rights in order to promote and maintain their dignity and autonomy. And whereas all residents should be aware of their rights so that they may, they may be empowered to live with dignity and self-determination. And whereas we wish to honor and celebrate these citizens to recognize their rich individuality and to reaffirm their right to vote and participate politically, including the right to have a say in their care. And whereas individuals and groups across the country will be celebrating Residents' Rights Month with the theme, My Voice, My Vote, My Right, to emphasize the importance of affirming these rights through, fam through facility practices, public policy, and resident-centered decision-making. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Alamance County Board of County Commissioners do hereby proclaim October 2012 as National Long-Term Care Residents' Rights Month in the County of Alamance and encourages all citizens to recognize these important observances. Is there a second? Second. 
Thank you, Mr. Lashley. Any discussion or comments about this proclamation? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. And we have a, um, a gold embossed copy of this that we'd like um, Ms. Jackson to get to you. Brian, would you mind giving this to um, Ms. Jackson? <coughs> With our support and luck, and again, we thank all of you for being here this evening and, and encourage you to give and deliver that message to other groups within our community, uh, not only during October, but throughout the year. So thank you. Thank you. Willie May, it's, it's a pleasure to, um, <laughs> to, to hear you, to, to hear you on the radio. George, we hear you on the radio. You're a, you're a lot more docile in person than uh, than on the radio. It's it's it's, it's good to see you. I am saving this article to keep the church from bringing it to me, and I'm going to mail it to every congressman in Washington and every member of the General Assembly. Good, good luck. Good. And Kim Berry is retiring. Okay. I don't know if y'all know Kim Berry, but uh, and Blair, I don't know what's the person. Yeah. Anyway, I met him, and he was supposed to be here tonight, too. So. Well, but we're glad to have you here. So. And at our recent forum, very recent forum, we, we saw many of you that we're mm -hmm. seeing tonight. So so welcome. You, you don't have a time clock tonight or anything, do you? <laughs> oh, you do? Okay. I'll hold it up a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. We'll move right along now to item number seven, which is the budget amendment for the health department. <clears throat> And uh, is that going to be Barry? Is that going to be? Yeah, that's going to be. That, that's Barry, going to be that's you. Not Barry. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. You're right. That is a hard lady to follow. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Stacy Turpin Saunders, representing the Alamance County Health Department, and presenting the proposed budget amendment for your consideration on behalf of Mr. Barry Bass. Stacy, you might want to move that mic up a little bit. Sure. Thank you. The Alamance County Health Department was awarded $4,000 by the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina Foundation for implementation of the Alamance County Health Department Customer Service Quality Improvement Project. Um, as part of our performance management and performance-based budgeting goals, we intend to use these awarded f funds to provide customer service training for our staff, for our frontline staff, as well as leadership training for our uh, management team and our supervisors. And we're requesting 4000 be budgeted to the 2012-13 fiscal year. Any questions for Stacy? Is there a motion to accept the $4,000? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Thank All you. in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank, Stacey, you. thank, thank you. you for being here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item number eight, request to expand fund, to expend funds from the Capital Buildings Capital Reserve Fund. Welcome, Brian Haygood, Assistant County Manager. Thank you, Welcome Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Commissioner. So I'm here this evening to request uh, we be given permission to spend proceeds from the Capital Buildings Capital Reserve Fund. Uh, the total balance in this fund at this time is $393,265. If you remember several months ago, we transferred monies from the facility improvement plan, the, the leftover monies, into this fund uh, specifically to make repairs, to continue to make repairs to county facilities. There were two uh, requirements to be able to spend money out of this code. Uh, one is the project must be over $10,000, and the second is any, any project requires approval of the board before we can begin on them. Tonight, uh, I have information for you about two different projects. The first one is uh, repair work to the Alamance County Rescue Building. Uh, this repair work would include replacing the roof and doing various uh, interior renovations. I will say uh, something important to note here, Alamance County Rescue has agreed to reimburse the county for one half of the cost of the roof. So uh, we would allocate um, $40,000, which is the cost of the entire project, but the rescue uh, will be given back to the county half the cost of the roof, which is uh, almost $15,000. So we would ask you to approve us spending uh, a total of $40,000 with uh, $14,370 coming back from uh, rescue. The second project is repair work to the Alamance County Criminal Court building, which is the building uh, just down the street uh, going toward the War Memorial. Uh, that building is in dire need of repairs to its uh, HVAC system. We need to replace all the three-way control valves in that building and their actuators, and it also includes uh, piping to be replaced to the heating and cooling coals. These valves are bad. They do not function the way that they are supposed to. It's requiring that facility staff go there several times during the day to adjust them. We think uh, making these repairs will help prolong the life of the system. 
as well as lessen some of our utility bills in the long run. The total cost of that project would be $35,000. So I'm asking this evening that you allow us to spend in total $75,000 to do these two projects, repairs to rescue and repairs to the criminal court building, and we would be recovering uh, almost $15,000 back from rescue for the cost of the roof. Uh, before we can proceed, we do need a vote of approval from the board. Uh, and I'm here to answer any questions. I also have Richard Hill, who's the director of our facilities department. He is here also uh, try to answer any questions you might have. And Mr. Chairman, if I would say on the rescue project, uh, we have tried to piecemeal that project uh, since we've moved and trying to use existing facilities money and just not been able to spend the money like we should on the project. Rescue has been very patient with us about wanting to finish up the renovations and, and we appreciate their patience with us. This will give us the opportunity to, to fix our roof, but also to finalize all the renovations uh, that we needed and we were obligated to do after we left. So, uh, uh, but I do appreciate Brian and the work that Richard and his group <coughs> have done and Chuck uh, to get us to this point. Uh, what has lacked has been funding, and uh, this would allow us just to go ahead and get it done and get it done right. How will, okay, you, you got a total cost there of 40035 and you're asking for the full seventy five. Where does that reimbursement money come back into? It will go back into the capital code. Right. So when the when so rescue technically you're only asking for fifty five thousand, is that correct? That's you know correct, mean? but we would allocate well, all of it. <clears throat> yes, sir. We would allocate all of it pay for all the work to be done up front and then rescue would reimburse the county and any any savings from this if, if things come in under these <coughs> budgets or the funds that come from rescue would go back into the capital cut rescue tomorrow. has done a lot of work for Alabama County and they deserve us to fund that mm -hmm. roof and yeah. other repairs there and what, what kind of guarantee do you have on that roof that they're going to be replacing Richard well, there's a modified minimum on it now. We'll take that off and put a, you know, a nice new. So how many uh, years are we looking? Yeah, it'll be a 20 year roof. 20. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's a pitch problem on the roof that's causing most of the damage. So we got to do a little bit of build up and we have a good 20 year roof. It should provide them a home for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Brian, what is the um, overall balance of this reserve fund and where do you see that money? being used and will it be replenished or is this what's truly left over from some of the work we did that was funded by the bond do you have that information i do uh the current balance is three hundred ninety three thousand dollars that's how much we have in there right now and it is specifically for repairs to county properties that's all it's for um we have identified various needs the county has you know after the facility improvement plan which is about a 10 million dollar project we knocked out a lot of very serious needs that county buildings have. We couldn't do everything that the county had in place. So what uh, the facilities department has done is gone through and made itemized lists of other repairs that need to be done. Um, we've tried to prioritize them in high, medium, low priorities. Uh, going through uh, with Richard, I think we're at about four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars worth of high priority needs that we still have that we need to knock out. We hope to be able to use these funds to get started on those. Um, you know, if if things get better economically for the county, it would probably be a good idea for the board to consider putting some funding into this on occasion to help us stay ahead of these projects rather than what well, we had to find ourselves in the facility improvement process. Things so, have really got improved in maintenance since yeah. Richard came on board. Yeah. I can see a big difference. They do a great job trying to stay ahead of the problems. Uh, it, it just it does take some some funding to allow them to be able to stay out in front of it before it develops into something very expensive. And it's like the, the HVAC problems at criminal court. If we can do this work this way, we get to plan when they're shut down and when the work happens rather than wait for the system to collapse, uh, which always happens at the worst possible oh, yeah. time. So, um. um, are there other questions for Brian? We do need a motion to um, I'll make the motion. Except these two projects. I'll make the motion this. by Mr. Lashley, second by Mr. Boswell. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just to mention, probably the next project that will come in front of you be the um, uh, fire alarm system for this building. So we're still in the process of doing that. So uh, you're still again, piecing it together we're still right now. There, uh, it's being designed now, <laughs> and I'm uh, working with Allie Williams, Carmen King, Bryan, and the fire marshal, and, and uh, Dexter. So 
it, it really is coming well or coming together well. Uh, but again, we don't have to do the firewalks anymore, which has been a good thing. With the, the the folks, we don't need the guards and yeah, we we we've got eliminated. band-aided to the okay. point where we're okay. Good, good. Okay. Um, next item, Jason Martin is going to talk about the solid waste plan amendment, grant application, and budget for abandoned manufactured homes. Jason, welcome. <coughs> Looks like exciting topics. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Plain Commissioner. Um, I'll be very brief this evening. Um, what you have before you in, in your packet um, there. I'm so used to saying in your packet uh, in front of you now this evening. <laughs> well, it's uh, our pack. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you should have uh, uh, the uh, agenda item here for the approval of a solid waste plan amendment for abandoned manufactured homes, uh, the abandoned manufactured home grant application, and then uh, for the budget for that program. Uh, in early 2012, summer of 2012, I heard about funding that was available through uh, NC Diener for uh, demolition and recycling of abandoned manufactured homes. And as the board knows, we have a uh, dead storage of manufactured homes ordinance in the county uh, that deals with abandoned mobile homes. Uh, so applying for this particular grant is a way to kind of give an incentive to folks to basically designate their abandoned mobile home as abandoned and be able to get assistance through grant funding uh, to have that demolished and recycled. Um, the purpose of the program that you have as part of the grant application in there is that one, that the mobile home has to be vacant. Uh, it's not to put somebody out of their home or anything like that. And two, for the uh, mobile home to not be located in a commercial area like a mobile home park. Um, but as part of the process, we had to do an amendment to the solid waste plan, uh, which Greg Thomas is here this evening as well and, and can help answer questions on that. You should have the very first uh, thing there is the current section of the, uh, of the solid waste <coughs> plan and then what the proposed amendment would be. Uh, and this is the language that would meet the state's requirements in order to be able to apply for the grant. Um, the grant is a thirty. Excuse me, it's a forty thousand dollar grant for the first time. Uh, Two thousand five hundred dollars uh, is set aside for planning expenses, which is to basically purchase technology or uh, materials that we need to implement the program. It's a one-time grant that we would receive, and then the remaining thirty-seven thousand five hundred would be used to actually demolish and dispose of abandoned mobile homes. Um, you should have also in here copies of letters from all and resolutions from all of the municipalities in the county. I have gone and made presentations to several of the town councils and as well as the uh, city council for the city of Burlington uh, to go over this. As part of the, the process, the state requires that we receive support from all of them uh, prior to amending the uh, solid waste plan. Um, that being said, I'll be glad to take any questions you all have uh, for me at this time. And, and if Greg has any comments he wants to add, I'd like to thank him for his assistance on this project. It's been a lot of fun working Would with Would you him. explain exactly what you talk, talk to me, and I know I think mm -hmm. it was informative, but tell everybody or the commissioners what you plan to do with this with the aluminum that you get out of those? Oh, yeah. Metal. Yeah, the, the metal, basically, the way the program will be set up is that the contractor that we procure to do the services to, to demolish the mobile home, they will be able to take that and recycle it. And any proceeds they get from that, they can keep. So that will help offset the cost of actually doing the demolition. So I think <coughs> we'll be able to stretch our grant dollars even further. And uh, that's a good way to kind of you know, give some incentive to the uh, local demolition contractors to bid on these projects as well. And uh, I'll go ahead. All right, go ahead. Um, what what was it y'all come up with on the moving? Typically, it's going to be what seven fifty. Is that right? Um, right from the planning board. It's been pretty much anywhere from, I believe, Claude. Wouldn't you say moving has been anywhere from eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars? Eight to twelve. The mm -hmm. first one, uh, first three we did were about seven hundred fifty dollars. Petty mobile home mm -hmm. was moving them for and us. And the owners pay half of that. Is that they correct? Half correct. And then what's recycled and collected, we get reimbursed, which of course mm -hmm. will roll mm -hmm. over into this. We didn't do it until metal prices got up to around one hundred ninety, two hundred dollars a ton, 
and that helped offside. Right. It paid the tipping fee. Sure. And in most of the cases. Now, but they're, they're about 130. Uh -huh. So yeah. it's a win-win. I mean, the whole program yeah. is. How, how much, um, how many of these are out there? And what, what type of volume are we talking about? I think we will easily meet our 20 for the year. That's tw the unit number of yeah, 20? Yeah, we'll, we'll easily meet that. Um, now, do just, you find them, or does the owner find you? And uh, The way this will be set up is that we are going to try to have them contact us to voluntarily designate the mobile home. Now, there's also a provision in the program where if they are cited under our ordinance that they can receive assistance as well, but it'll be at 50%. It won't be at 100%. But it sounds like you're doing... I mean, them a great favor. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. They better it contact the you. Yeah. And yeah. so by having the municipal buy-in, that means anywhere in the county, even if it's inside the city limits right. of Burlington, that, that is all correct. these applies. Yep, that corrects. We can use the, the funding anywhere in the county. Um, unlike a lot of grants where we're not allowed to use it in the municipalities, we can use this one anywhere. And one, I just noticed one major thing that I did not put in here, and I apologize, there is no matching funds required. So there's no county dollars hey, to go into this. You put it oh, okay. It is. Um, having nothing to do with mobile homes, but can we get something like this for all these abandoned commercial buildings we have around? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? The problem is they cost too much to take down. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you certainly well, can't transport them. No. And this can help, like the one that we have had some problems with. If we'd have had this in place, then <coughs> it would have helped. And in, uh, in the junkyards, some of the junkyards have abandoned mobile mm -hmm. homes. So. Oh, yeah, not uncommon at all. Yeah, and so could we use it for that too, Justin? At the um, we can. If they're not currently in violation with us, yeah. then oh, yeah. they can voluntarily designate it. But if they are in violation, we'll offer to them, you know, hey, we have this program. Mm -hmm. But you can only get a 50 percent, right. you know, uh, that'll be yeah, the cutoff. Yeah, but that's better than them having to do the whole thing. Union right. Ridge Road comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, well, I can proudly say both of those mobile homes <laughs> are gone. Yes, both of those are gone. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's very good. We do need, as an action item, we need a motion to well, accept this grant. I'm sorry, we have other one, questions? One more question. Uh, for the citizens to know, I guess they can contact the planning board and you can kind of work, walk them through this process if they have a home on their property mm -hmm. they can call the planning board and contact you and say look we have a mobile home and we want to yes sir as, as soon as we submit the grant application with your approval tonight as soon as I hear back that we've been approved then we will go ahead and and establish that and try to get the word out okay. to folks to, to be able to call us and set up the list. Um, I don't foresee there being any problem. This All this information was submitted to the state for cursory review before I brought it to you all, and they indicated that, there's, uh, that we were good to go. Good. So I think we'll be okay. Very good. Is there such a motion? So moved. Thank you, Bill. Second. Linda, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank okay. you, Jason. Thank you. Time now for the county manager's report. We've got two bulleted items, performance evaluation process update and discussion on their fund balance and the quarterly financials. And on that subject, I think each commissioner was given a copy of the, the final budget, yes. but not, not our financial statement. No, I did email it to you. I apologize. I, I didn't yeah, you think about it, but. Uh, but I can get you another copy if you need it. Uh, just a, a, a quick update on the budget. Uh, for the first quarter, we are behind in revenue approximately 400000 uh, compared to this time last year. And we believe the main part of that is because we reduced the uh, uh, early payment and uh, from 2% to half a percent. So our sales tax revenue is down at this point by about a million two. So a, again, if we, you know, that offset a little bit. Um, our expenditures are up uh, about a million two as, as well, but we have met with department heads to make sure we're staying on top and, and um, not having anything out of the ordinary and that we're still keeping a tight rein on our budget. So um, um, not really worried about anything at this point since it's only the first quarter, but, but I think we should be in fairly good shape moving forward. 
Now, so, Craig, you said the sales tax revenue down. Didn't you mean the property tax revenue? Property, I'm property sorry. I, I meant the, the yeah. property tax. Yeah. So I okay. Do, and I do. think it's important to, to emphasize what you said. The reason it's down is we did, away, we did away with a major incentive to pay early. Right. Which will save us a couple hundred thousand. Uh, about on, uh, roughly. 600000 I believe. And we'll have it all by December 31. Right. right. But what, what you're presenting, what you copied for us, is just a, a remake right. of what that, we already have. That's the pretties of our final budget. Uh, we we had not given you the final uh, pretty version of the budget, and that's it right there. Let's keep that term yeah. out of the minutes, Tori. <laughs> um, how about the final audit? Uh, the final audit, uh, we will have that presentation in December. Uh, just an FYI, and, and everybody's always concerned about fund balance, is our fund balance, uh, we will add <clears throat> to fund balance by $2.566 million. And if you look at it compared to the year before, uh, when we used $4.4 .4 million in fund balance, that's over a $7 million swing uh, from where we were uh, last year. And again, we did have some one-time influxes of revenue. Uh, probably the biggest piece was uh, 1.75 million from the LME. However, we have cut expenditures. Expenditures were down, revenues were up. So we really, uh, I really want to thank the departments and the department heads and the work that finance has done uh, to get us uh, at this point, and, and I, I like to tell people, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, and it's not a train. And uh, so it, there's been a lot of hard work uh, to help with this turnaround, but again, a lot of thanks to Amy and Susan, and again to the department heads for the work that they've done. Uh, we're, we're getting our feet back on the ground and, and moving forward uh, in a positive manner financially. So. Uh, yeah very excited about that well and i'll be anxious to see the audit i, I just mm -hmm. i have to ask if you already know that 2.5 million dollars is going to be added to the fund balance why do we have to wait till december to hear from the audit? final you sit sit to the state and approved these are the final numbers but they have to send it to the state first for approval what's the state uh, going to do it has to go to the LLC. local government <clears throat> commission they're going to bless it they'll bless they'll it they'll bless us um, and then we'll have the uh audit presentation i believe december the second meeting in December. December. Oh, Merry Christmas. What if we add two point five million dollars? Do you know where that will put us in relation to that percentage that we like to look at of the minimum of eight percent? Any idea? And I don't want to put you on the spot because you probably don't have it in front of you. Eleven point twenty four. Oh yeah. Compared to ten point nine. Yeah. We were at ten point nine, and this will bring us to eleven point two. With the addition of two and a half. Right. Okay, so which means the year before, if we dropped four million, we must have gone from like fifteen or sixteen down to ten point nine. Is that right? So we we're, we're, we are we're on our way back. Yeah. We are on our way back. Well, good. Well, congratulations. So, well, and, and again, it, it was good leadership from the board as well. We we and and again, the department heads really uh, cut back on their expenditures, and and um, you know, again, it is getting us to the point where we can move forward. Um, um, you mentioned that property tax revenues were down because of the discount going away. Right. Revenue from property taxes. Did you say what revenue from sales tax was through the first quarter compared to a year ago? It is. It's up, up. two hundred twenty-three thousand. Right. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's also encouraging. Right. Yes. Good. And well, before you change any oh, questions from the commissioners about either the budget or the first quarter or the fund balance. Okay. Um, also, uh, uh, Chairman Manny asked me to look at the performance evaluations uh, for the to evaluate the manager, the attorney, and the tax collector. Uh, I've kind of taken the three or four that you were given and trying to work on one final draft. Uh, I've got to get it to Clyde and to Gerald as well to get their input. I uh, should have that done this week, and then hopefully we can give you a draft later on this week for you to give your final blessing on it, and we'll go from there. Well, and, and I appreciate that. As we've talked about the idea of some type of performance review or accountability or job description, 
exists for every position in county government except the three that report to the board. So what we did was we, and Tory helped a lot, we got some from the um, School of Government, I guess, right. of sample um, job descriptions, and we, we got one for every position. Tory found one for the tax administrator. Right. So our thought was, okay, we've got these, they're from different counties, let's take what's good and come up with a form that would address all three separately but would be in the same format. Mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of where we are. That, that, yes, sir. That would work. So, um, so in essence, they're right. forming their own. <clears throat> well, it, but you'll have the final blessing. You'll have the final blessing on. Well, and not only for the items in it, right. but also the yes, form sir. being consistent. Yes, sir. And, and that's what I think we're, we'd like to say. Yes, sir. So we'll have an opportunity to put in. Yes, sir. It, 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 in you'll you'll get a draft back of, of staff's recommendation. If you like it or or won't we'll make changes, we'll go from there. And you also have Sherry involved in this process. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, just a couple other things to mention. Uh, I did talk to Kathy Holland today, and early voting has gone really, really well so far. Uh, we had about 2,500 people on Thursday and about 2,500 on Friday. I'm not sure about Saturday or, or today, uh, but that has been gone. And, and appreciate the work that the Board of Elections have done. It's, it's been a yeoman's job. Uh, making sure everything's straight and um, everybody's where they're supposed to be. So I appreciate the work Kathy does. Now they they didn't they didn't just because we're kind of in the know about this. They didn't really have it Saturday. It's it's the next two yeah. Saturdays. Oh, that's right. Next two Saturdays. So, so, Thursday, Friday, and today. That's right. Uh, and uh, just want to mention that on the 25th we do have our dinner, the county city meeting over at the Children's Museum uh, here in Graham, uh, beginning at 6. And that is all I have. Thank you, Craig. All right, thank you. Um, any comments from the commissioners? I, I have one, and I'm sorry I meant to say this at the very beginning, but you'll notice that Tim Sutton is not with us tonight. Um, we, we knew he wasn't going to be here. He, he is involved in teaching a class, and the class doesn't meet every Monday, but on the Mondays that it meets, he needs to be there. So... Um, he, he did send his regrets and I think he had a conversation with you about tonight's agenda so um, Mr. Sutton is, is, is fine um, last last time he was gone which was a couple of months ago for the same reason um, he, he had been scheduled to do the prayer and so I asked our vice chair at the beginning of the meeting I said would you mind praying for Tim <laughs> <laughs> and what I meant well, was really he, what I, I meant was <laughs> what I meant was because he wasn't here, not that he needed <laughs> prayer that particular night, as we all do every night. So anyway, any other comments? Yep. Very good. If not, we stand adjourned. Thank you all for being here. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Meetings of the Commissioner's Board occur at 7 p.m. on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers on the second floor of the County Office Building located at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the Commissioner's website at www.alamance-nc.com. You can watch the most recent meeting of the County Commissioners on the second and fourth Wednesday of each month on Time Warner's local public access channel beginning at 10 o'clock p.m. You can also watch recordings of the most recent meeting and past meetings by going to our website at www.alamance-nc.com. Please visit our website for more information on watching Commissioner meetings online. For technical questions about this meeting's online or television broadcast, please contact our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. Please note that this address is for technical questions only. Questions or comments regarding the content of commissioner meetings may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. Click on the link that says Alamance County Commissioners to visit the commissioner's website, where you can learn about our commissioners, read minutes of past meetings, access agendas, and find other information about our Board of Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to the County Commissioners by addressing it to the Alamance County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, 
North Carolina 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting.